our gracious heavenly Father. We thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for this pleasant morning. We thank you for the time to devote upon your scriptures. Help us through your scriptures to receive the concern for the girl child into our hearts. We ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. One day I was commuting in an electric train and I was standing beside a couple of middle-aged women and one of whose son, a boy of 12 to 13 years, is traveling along with them. As the train crossed a particular railway station, these two ladies caught sight of one of the girls known to them walking on the platform along with her male companion. As the ladies began to talk about this girl and about her male companion, the boy intervened to make an observation that the man is bald-headed. Immediately, his mother raised her hand as if to slap him, but she did not. But she screamed at him, saying, It is okay, does not matter how a man looks, but it is only for the woman, everything has to be perfect. In a second, the mother had sown the seed of toxic masculinity in the heart and mind of this same boy. We live in a world of toxic masculinity where violence against women and girl children are normalized and our boys are socialized in a masculinized behaviors. Today we observe the Sunday for girl children and protecting the girl child is the theme for this son. We continuously are fed with the news about the violence, extreme violence that women and girl children face in our society. A couple of years ago, there was a news that a boy attacked a girl scarring her face with a shred of a bottle, broken bottle, for refusing to fall in love with him. And for the same reason, another boy pushed a girl in front of an electric train. Both the incidents happened in Chennai. The attitude of toxic masculinity is this. I am a boy, I am a man. I cannot be refused. I cannot be rebuffed. And conversely, it tells the girl, you are a woman, you are a girl. You don't get to choose. You don't get to decide. Why should we celebrate a special Sunday for a girl child? This is an enduring question that has to be answered year after year. The Church of South India is persistent in reminding the church about the state of girl children every year. Have we heard about the missing girl child at birth? The missing girl child at birth. According to the UN report, in a span of five years, there were 4,60,000 girl children missed at birth. That is, of the total girl babies who were conceived and the babies who were delivered and reported alive, the gap is 4,60,000 in a span of five years. And among the missing girl children at birth, 90 to 95 percent happened in India and China. 
The UN report also informs us that of all the girls who are married in one year in India, of all the girls, 50% of the girls are married before they attain the age of 18. 50% of the girls. According to the National Survey of Crimes Against Women, in the age group of 15 to 49, 31% of girls and women suffer gender violence. We are living in a world that constructed upon gender discrimination. Our children are socialized in a community based on discrimination based on gender. Why should we talk about that from the pulpit? We should realize that our Bible is a product of a society which was constructed upon gender discrimination. Not only our Bible, but the scripture of every religion provide ideological foundation and religious justification for discrimination and violence against girl children and women. Today's Gospel text, Matthew 15, in that text we hear a mother screaming, My daughter is severely oppressed by him. Via this text, we hear the screams of mothers all over the world, screams of mothers of daughters who are oppressed by the demons of gender violence and gender discrimination. This scream of this Canaanite woman pleading for the deliverance of her daughter encapsulates the scream of the parents of girl children all over the world pleading for the liberation of their daughters. Unsurprisingly, the mother's plea is ignored or is drowned amidst the surrounding wind of other concerns. In Matthew chapter 15, the mother had to scream, she had to run after, she had to plead, beg, and kneel down before she is here. Another normal for any mother's scream for a girl child being ignored in a society dominated by male feminists. It is true that the Bible is a product of gender community. Nevertheless, one should not fail to note how the Bible tries to distance itself from the ethics of masculinity that may be found in its pages also. At the very beginning, the Bible forecloses any discrimination based on gender when it declares that God created human beings and He created them in His image and He created them male and female. The equal share of image and likeness of God among male and female is recorded in Genesis 1. And the Bible describes that any man who leaves his father or mother shall flee to his wife in Genesis chapter 2. At the very beginning itself, the Bible seeks to distance itself from the toxic masculinity that may emanate from its pages. Bible was authored by men and men, though they may be inspired or culturally conditioned. The biblical texts are culturally conditioned texts. Nevertheless, the Bible seeks to record and by recording to recommend 
the equal treatment of those children wherever it is possible. In the Old Testament lesson, the history of Job's history of Job ends in a crescendo. And at the end, three of his daughters are named Jemima, Hesir, and Karan Tapu. And the boys are left unnamed. Strange in a Bible where usually the women and the girl children are left unnumbered and unnamed. The book of Job signs off with a note in chapter 42, verse 15, that the daughters were given equal inheritance along with the sons. In Numbers 27, we read about five daughters of Zelophehad. Again, it is surprising that all the five daughters are named. And these five daughters come and argue with Moses the lawgiver to force an amendment for the law of inheritance. The yeah, bewildered Moses turns to God. And God acquiesces to the demand of the girls. And in number 27, Numbers chapter 27, verse 7, God says, The daughters of Zerophehad are right. Transfer their father's property onto the daughters. And that paves the way for the land holding of girl children in the Hebrew society down the ages. And after many years, Caleb's daughter, Aksa, exercises a right for land holding, demanding her father to provide her with good lands, as we read in Judges chapter 1, verse 15. In the Bible, when men wish wars and decide the destiny into might, it is remarkable to note that the claims of the girl children are recorded and it's more importantly their achievements without any bloodshed are recorded. The Bible records and by recording recommends equal treatment of both girl children in a world dominated by warring men. No less significant is Jesus' visit to the synagogue leader's house, Jairus' house, in Mark chapter 5. No less significant is Jesus' decision to pollute himself by touching a dead body by clutching the hand of a little girl and commanding her, saying, Little girl, arise. In fact, while they were on the way, the news comes to the leader of the synagogue saying that the girl is dead already. They also advise Jairus not to bother the rabbi since the girl is dead. Yes. In a world dominated by men, little girls are dispensable. They also wanted uh, the rabbi not to be polluted because he has to go from place to place. But Jesus insisted on going because for Jesus, the life of a little girl is worthier than the ritual purity of a rabbi. Little girl arise. Is a reverberating command wherever your girl children is affected. It should be a reverberating command wherever and whenever your girl children is affected by violence, denial of life, denial of opportunity, sexual harassment. I appreciate the involvement of this congregation in empowering girl children. Parivalya is a symbol of our concern for the disabled girl children. Our tuition center is a sign that we are concerned about the underprivileged girls. 
The women's prayer once in a month is born out of our concern for women in the context of domestic violence and sexual harassment at workplace. The meeting numbers can be increased. The tally training through social concern speaks about our concern for urban girls as a denied opportunity. Men's Fellowship initiated school training program for rural girls recently and we have to do more. Every fellowship group, every fellowship group must have a girl child empowerment program which cries aloud saying, little girl, arise. Hail the beloved. The concern for girl children is the concern of the worldwide churches. The concern for the girl child is a concern of the Church of South India. The concern of every diocese, the concern for the girl child is concern for the, each and every congregation. The concern for girl children is an integral part of a Christian spirituality. Pray for girl children unceasingly, and wherever a girl child is oppressed. Intervene resolutely, saying, Girl child, arise.